Welcome to the studios of News Karnataka once again. This time it's for a very interesting subject for students. It's called Know Your Campus. We have just finished a series on uh, career guidance with Professor Ronald Pinto. And as an extension of that, we would like you to visit virtually, of course, the various campuses in Mangalore first, and then we'll take it throughout Karnataka. So this is the first episode and uh, we are today focusing on the St. Joseph Engineering College in Vamanjur in Mangalore. Mangalore, as you know, is a wonderful coastal city with everything from culture to linguistic diversity. We have the port, we have the sand, we have the beach, we have everything in Mangalore. The cuisine is wonderful. So it's a nice place to be and the ambience at St. Joseph's Engineering College is just absolutely fantastic. But you are there to study and so you would like to know definitely about the campus, the facilities there, the learning methods that are being offered there, the chance to be practically trained for innovation and for entrepreneurship. Well, today in the studios with me is uh, Mr. Satyendra Bhatt. He is the Head of Training and Placement at St. Joseph's Engineering College. He is also the Placement Officer, which we will talk about a little later. And of course, uh, he is also an Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Applications. Welcome to the show, Satyendra. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And um, I want to ask you, I know St. Joseph's Engineering College, just by way of an introduction, is uh, it was started in 2002 and uh, is an autonomous college. It's also recognized by the AICTE, which is the All India Council for Technical Education. It's affiliated with the Vishweshira uh, Technical University in Bel Belgaum. And also it is uh, NAC uh, rated at A+. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. So everything is really, really good and it's got a wonderful campus. I've been there. But I want to know from you, uh, what is the number of students there? What is special about the campus? What is the secret? In, you know, when you have, you know, go to a restaurant and you enjoy a nice dish, I'm sure there is a secret ingredient in that. And in uh, St. Joseph's Engineering College, what exactly is that secret ingredient? Let our students know, please. Yeah. To begin with, as you have rightly said, we started in the year 2002 uh, with four engineering branches. It was the vision of our then bishop to have a technical education institution under the Diocese of Mangalore and that is how we started. And to answer your second question, which is about the number of students on campus, we have uh, 2500 students across all branches of all engineering as well as PG streams. And uh, the most important ingredient that we have at St. Joseph Engineering College is that we focus on hands-on education. Our education is not only based on theoretical aspects that you learn in the classroom, of course, that is important, that forms the base and that forms the knowledge base of any student. But then we want the students to be more practical, more hands on and they should do more of projects and then learn from their own experiences. That is one of the secret recipes that we have. It is not secret anymore, but then we are trying to do it in a different way so that the students become better engineers. Our motto is that uh, the students should learn by doing things. They should not learn by studying things, they should learn by doing things and that is how actually they will learn. And the second important thing that we believe in St. Joseph Engineering College is that discipline is most important. While you get active in all your other extracurricular, co-curricular and all project based learning and all that, it is very important to be disciplined and that I can say is the USP of the college which has been serving us for a long long time and uh, that we believe is the uh, secret of our success. Okay, so discipline, hard work and service. I think these are the three ingredients that you are really focused on. You have, I think, um, three parts to your, uh, uh, to your offerings. I think there's engineering, there's uh, computer applications and there is also business administration. Yeah. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah. As again, you have rightly said, the motto of the college is service and excellence. And that is what we strive to do. And uh, as far as our uh, branches are concerned, we have uh, B programs where we have uh, seven streams of engineering 
and we have uh, PG programs. So to begin with, uh, from engineering perspective, we have computer science and engineering. We have electronics and communication engineering. We have electrical and electronics engineering. We have mechanical engineering. We have civil engineering. And recently, because of the market demand, we have started two more courses. One is uh, B in artificial intelligence and machine learning and uh, B in computer science and business studies. The last course, Computer Science and Business Studies, is entirely designed by TCS, the IT giant. And in their association, we have started this new course. We have just started in this year. So that is the uh, brand new course that we, that we have started because of a lot of demand for computer science related uh, aspirants in the market. And coming to the PG side, post-graduation, we have an MBA program, Master of Business Administration, where we have dual specializations. Uh, we have specialization in uh, marketing and finance, finance and HR, and HR and marketing. And along with that, this year, we have started a very interesting course, MBA in Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Venture Development. This is started with a special impetus on entrepreneurship and innovation on campus. And we have an intake of 30 for that uh, branch of MBA. And as you said, we also have a uh, Master of Computer Applications, which is another B, uh, MCA PG program that we have on campus. To go with it, we have doctoral programs also in almost all the branches of engineering. Oh, I see. That's, that's very interesting. So you can actually complete your doctorate and then exit the campus. Yes, you can do that. You, you can, can start as an undergraduate and you can finish your doctorate and then exit the campus. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, that's a long time to spend in a campus. I'm sure the campus is beautiful and uh, it's got a lot of facilities, hostels and stuff like that, including uh, probably a very good canteen also. What do you think? Does it have that? Yes, we have a well-furnished canteen. We have separate vegetarian and non-vegetarian sections to go with the multiple cafeterias on campus uh, where students go during the break and uh, get themselves refreshments. And uh, we also have uh, separate hostels for boys as well as girls on campus. Uh, we have around 1,000 students residing on campus and uh, recently we have also started AC hostels because a lot of requests come from students that they because Mangalore is a very hot place and uh, you need this AC. So we have started a separate AC hostels for boys as well as girls. So all these facilities are in-house. We don't have to go anywhere else. For that matter, we have a staff quarters facility also for our staff. So a lot of our staff also reside on campus. And the biggest advantage that we have is that our priests, the directors of the institution, they are on campus. Okay. So they will be able to cater to the needs of students anytime, whenever need be. And we also have a well-furnished dispensary for the medical needs of the students. And uh, we are uh, tied up with the Father Muller Medical College. In case of any, any emergency, we always can bank on them. Okay, so yeah, I think everything is taken care of. It's like one, uh, one uh, well-knit, uh, gated community. Uh, you know, like these builders now, nowadays they do, they have these gated communities where everything is available on campus and I think uh, St. Joseph's has got that. But what's most important is I think they are creating engineers that are human, people who are, who are, uh, who want to, who are trained to serve the nation in whatever way they can after their studies. It's not just about making money, it's not just about doing a job. Uh, I think service is inbuilt into their uh, curriculum and they learn about how to serve the community through their engineering skills uh, during their tenure in the campus. Am I correct? Uh, yes, Satyendra? yes, yes. Yeah. So can you just tell us one or two examples of how that is being inculcated in students? Yeah, it's good that you brought about community engagement initiatives. Uh, we have adopted five villages in the close vicinity of uh, Mangalore where we do a lot of social service when uh, people were struggling for food and other necessary items during the COVID pandemic, our college was the first one to reach out to these local communities. And uh, adopting these villages have given a lot of options where our students go to these villages, find out the problems faced by the villagers and uh, try to give technical solutions to them. I think that is very much required. And when we go to these uh, villages, we understand what are the real problems of uh, rural India. And uh, those are the challenges our engineers need to tackle. And uh, this is one more aspect that uh, we bring about in students. We give them opportunities to work on real time app projects going to the rural places. And that is the advantage of uh, having these uh, adopted villages. They have a lot of problems. They don't know whom to go to. And since we are there with them, now they have a, 
sense of backing from our side. Any technical issues that they face, we are always there to uh, give a solution to that. And also we go to the schools in these villages and we uh, educate those school children in terms of some simple experiments that they can carry out in the schools, which makes them better individuals and uh, they will uh, Otherwise, they will not get this education from anywhere. So that is uh, as a part of our educational social responsibilities, we do all these activities. And you might be knowing that Vamanjur is prone to our Vamanjur dumping area yeah, yeah. problem that has it, been yes, yes. plaguing the city for a long, long time. Yeah. Along with city cooperation, we are working on one project, uh, Care Pachanadi Movement, where uh, we are going to deal with the problems faced by the Vamanjur area. Mm -hmm. And we are also working to give sustainable solution to those problems. The key word is sustainable. It is not a short term solution. We want to give a long term solution which will solve most of the problems. Just one question like can you give me one example of uh, where your students have developed something innovative uh, or a technical solution that has helped a village or uh, or any society, uh, a social issue, uh, any any one example of one product, yeah. or one, one solution. Yeah, one of the most interesting solutions that we are trying to build, which is a work in progress, is construction of a bridge in one of the neighboring adopted villages. Okay. So our civil engineering team is uh, very much enthusiastic about it mm -hmm. and we are working on that. We have done some small projects, but this is one big project that we have taken up and when it completes, we will have some major breakthrough in that area. Oh, that's wonderful. So you have lots of opportunities. One, uh, one last question before I close this uh, episode on the campus itself. Uh, you will, do you have any arrangements, uh, exchange arrangements with any university, foreign university or technically advanced uh, university or twinning arrangements? Uh, do you all have any such arrangements that you will uh, got into so that uh, the students can benefit? We do have. We have a separate collaborations office in the college to uh -huh. go with the training and placement department yeah. because we have uh, realized that uh, collaboration, collaborating with higher education institutions is also very important. Not all students will want to go for placements. So we need to tie up with higher education institutions in India as well as abroad. Mm -hmm. And through that, we have been able to send our students for summer internship programs. Uh, we started it in the year 2018 and because of which we have not been able to send too many students for summer internships. But whatever summer internships these people have done have been virtual because now during the yeah, pandemic period, yes, there yeah. was no provision to go overseas and uh, do these projects and internships. But then we have uh, got into this arrangement and uh, we have plenty of universities uh, with whom we have this tie-up arrangement and most of the students take uh, advantage of this as well. And through our collaborations office in the college, many students have gone overseas for higher education opportunities and they are doing pretty well there. Yeah, thank you very much Satyendra, the very enlightening and I'm sure the students uh, are already searching the internet for more news about SJEC. SJEC.ac.in. .ac.in, I stand corrected. Uh, please go to the website, you will get a lot of information there and there is also a chat bot if I am not mistaken. Yes, yes. Where you can chat and clear your doubts and then we will see you on campus shortly. But once you are on campus, naturally after you finish your course, you would like to know about the placements. Coming next in our next episode. Until then, see you soon.